Hello everybody, this is Tim here once again. Here's my view review for Ernest Rides again. Now for this film, I hadn't seen this film in a long time. As a kid, I remember hating this film. I remember hating this one as a kid. This one was one of my least was was my least favorite Ernest film as a kid. But watching it now as an adult, I enjoy this film much more. Uh, to be honest, out of all the films, I'd say this one is my favorite. I'm not sure if it's better or worse than Ernest Saves Christmas, which was one of my favorites as well. But for me, just watching this film just now, um, with it fresh in my mind, to me, this one just edges out Ernest Saves Christmas. I had a, a really fun time with this film because this film is pretty much a buddy film with Ernest like, being really obsessed with uh, fucking like treasure hunting and archaeology and stuff like that. And uh, he's like searching for this cannon. It's supposed to have the crown jewels inside of it. And he's got this friend named Abner, uh, who's a professor. Uh, Abner Mellon is his name. <laughs> he's like this real geeky, short little dude. Uh, and the actor that plays him does a really good job. And Jim Varney, once again, is perfect. But yeah, watching this film again, this film was a lot of fun. I had a really fun time with this. You got like these two vacuum salesman guys in the film who like work for this thing called a uh, Mighty Work Boy. <laughs> but they're kind of obnoxious at sometimes because they like... We finish each other's sentences and shit and like that all the time and they laugh this really obnoxious laugh. But they're supposed to be obnoxious, but sometimes I think they get a little bit too obnoxious. But uh they had me laughing my ass off a lot of time too though. So I enjoyed them. I hated them as a kid, but I enjoy watching them now. Um as far as the rest of the film goes, like I said it's a buddy film with Ernest teamed up with Dr. Mellon. And uh it's you get like this opening where Ernest is at this construction site and all these uh, power tools start coming to life because they get electrocuted. So it's kind of like role reversal here, I guess. The power tools come to life. They actually come to life. Instead of like, well, the equipment comes to life. Instead of like uh, Ernest getting electrocuted and causing them to chase after him, these pretty much come to life themselves. So it's a little bit different. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Ernest gets chased after by this fucking little mini buzzsaw. Or this little mini saw, I mean. And it chases after him. Um... It's kind of inter it's okay. It's decently entertaining. Uh, I kind of hated this movie at first, still when I was watching it. But once him and Abner actually team up, um, and they're actually going out looking for the crown jewels, it became really funny to me just because of the way they play off each other. Like uh, Ernest finds like this part of the cannon, and uh, him and Abner decide to go check out the site. And these construction workers get mad because Ernest keeps uh, tearing up their uh, place that they're building, and. Uh, uh, the guy Abner, he's talking about how his wife would get mad if he chips the paint on his car, his new, their new car. And uh, Ernest looks at him and goes, well, how would she feel about scraping your brains off the windshield? And he's like, good point. <laughs> I thought that was really funny, talking about how the construction workers are going to beat the shit out of them. They don't hear them get the hell out of there because Ernest once again has destroyed their uh, the, the place they're building. So they hop in the car and they get the hell out of there. Eventually they do find the cannon. There's this one guy in the movie that Abner meets early on. And he says that he believes in Abner's theories and stuff like that. And he really wants to find the cannon too. The cannon's name is like Goliath, I believe. Um, it's pretty obvious early on that this, this guy is going to be the villain. I don't know this actor's name, but I did see him in Freddy vs. Jason as well. He played uh, Laurie's dad, the character of Laurie's dad on Freddy vs. Jason. He's okay. He's fine as the villain. Um, pretty soon they do find the cannon. And uh, they managed to get it out of there. And what's funny is like the whole time Abner's talking about how horrible his life is. And Ernest is just sitting there staring at a lizard. Asking him. Uh, he keeps talking about, man, I wonder. Uh, is it? <laughs> He's like, uh, man, is this one of those lizards that uh, when it loses its tail, it takes it like a week to grow back? And he's like, I couldn't imagine going a week without a tail. <laughs> I just thought that was funny. <laughs> they do manage to get the cannon. But there's no crown jewels inside of it. But Ernest gets stuck in it. And uh, most of this movie takes place on the canon. Like, just what I like about this movie is it's a different groups of people. You got the bad guys going after the crown jewels. Then you got Ernest and Doctor Abner who have found the canon, who are trying to find the crown jewels. And then you got these uh, two, the two obnoxious but funny mighty work boy guys, plus uh, Abner's wife, who are also trying to get the crown jewels. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, the. Uh, it's it's really funny. It's just I like uh, I like how in the movie like all the people are looking for the crown jewels and everything. It's just entertaining to me. Um, but yeah, the and you get this really funny scene. The one of the uh, after Ernest manages to, well when Ernest is stuck in the cannon, there's like this big, fucking big spider in it, and he's like, uh, "Oh, you're so cute. <laughs> your little uh, hairy legs and your ten beady eyes." <laughs> 
he manages to get loose. He manages to get loose out of the cannon, and then uh, like one of the bad guys is looking for Ernest, and he dresses up as his old woman character, and um, uh, he like looks at the bad guy and he goes, "Is that a forty-four?" Talking about his gun, he says something like that, and he like knocks him out, and then he looks down there at him and he says, uh, "Looks just like Jaime." <laughs> I love that talking about his uh the, his son Jaime or the, that character's son Jaime. I thought that was hilarious. I love that. Um, and then uh well through the movie like Doctor Abner's character because Ernest has helped him become stronger as a person by getting him to do more on this adventure and stuff like that. Like uh they get stuck on the cannon and uh fucking uh, uh he tells Abner to uh scoot scoots towards him and he looks and then scoots and then Ernest is like. That counts as a hop. <laughs> I thought that was funny. He's like, I wasn't hopping, I was scooching. And uh, Jim Barney's like, uh, you were looking and then you were, uh, then you were scooching. That counts as a hop. And of course, the cannon like falls off the hill that they're on. They're on top of the cannon. They're like on a hill bank or something like that, and it rolls down the hill, crashes into a barn. All through the movie, Ernest keeps doing this juvenile shit to him. Like he's like, uh, hey, Doctor Mellon, what's that on your shirt? And he flicks him up in the face or whatever. Uh, some of that humor like that would be obnoxious to me, but the fact that Jim Varney does it with such charm, and it's actually like an important important part of their uh, like their characters, how Ernest keeps torturing him like that, like it's a fun part of their characters. I liked it. Um, but yeah, this this the the camaraderie between these two actors back and forth, Jim Varney and this guy that plays uh, Abner, uh, I just love. It's hilarious and. And what's funny is Abner becomes stronger as a as a person, but he still is like really geeky, and uh, he gets tougher. And he like uh, knocks out this security guard at the end of the movie when the bad guys have kidnapped Ernest. And every time he like does something now, like he knocks out the security guard with like the palm punches him, I believe like that, like up in the face. And he's like does an Elvis pose or something like that. And he goes, uh huh. <laughs> like uh, he's still geeky. Basically, is what I'm getting at. He's still trying to. He does like Elvis and uh, impersonations and shit now that he's like toughened up which I thought was funny and like uh, he's toughened up now to where his wife doesn't boss him around anymore and, and uh, he's like well, baby Ernest just changed me and she's like well I just don't see it Abner he walks back around and grabs her and kisses her and he's like uh oh <laughs> he just keeps doing this Elvis shit I thought was hilarious um <clears throat> eventually though Ernest gets captured they, uh, but Ernest does find the crown jewels they're actually in like these two barrels that are connected to the cannon not actually inside the cannon and uh, he gets the crown jewel stuck on his head. And uh, fucking. Uh... Oh, and before I, for, before I forget, like the Secret Service from Britain or England or whatever is uh, is also looking for the crown jewels. And uh, you get a funny line where they're talking. And one of the main guys talking on the phone, he's like, uh, if we can find a terrorist or something like that with this satellite, we can surely find, you know, this big, huge cannon. I thought that was hilarious. And eventually the bad guys capture Ernest, but what's funny is they can't get the crown off his head. And it's got like this little montage of them trying to get it off his head. And two guys have like got his body and they're like spinning it around while one of them's like holding on to the crown. They're like trying to like twist him out of it. Stuff like that I thought was funny. It was charming and funny. Um Well I wouldn't have probably wouldn't have liked it in a lesser Ernest movie, but this film feels like it earns it because it this film's just so much more fun and the two actors, Jim Barney and the guy that plays Abner have really good charisma together. And basically at the end of it, the bad guys have gotten Ernest, and they're going to surgically like remove the top of his head so they can get the crown off of him and the cut off the top of his head. Ernest manages to get away. The two mighty uh, work boy guys or whatever, they manage to make it there, and they're attacking the bad guy and with this vacuum, and they like fucking uh, pull him backwards with it, and it's attached to him, but then it becomes unplugged. And uh, they got this little like uh, singing book or something like that that keeps saying, uh, I'm a mighty work boy. I'll work for you. And then he fucking like decks them both in the face, punches them both in the face and knocks them out. And then while they're falling down, that thing keeps saying, I'm a mighty work boy. I'll work for you. But it's that would be kind of silly in, in, in any other movie. But here it feels earned and I like it because these characters have been really obnoxious. So when the bad guy punches them out, I'm like, you know, thank God. <laughs> But, uh, and so the, the the main bad guy, the guy from Freddy vs. Jason, he's trying to, uh, kill Ernest now with, like, all this historical equipment and stuff he's got saved in his office. He's, like, trying to shoot him with a musket, I believe is what it is. He's trying to shoot Ernest, and, uh, Ernest's like, come on now, we don't have to resort to this. We haven't even, uh, we can get this crown off, I'm sure of it. We haven't even tried Mrs. Butterworth yet. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. And then fucking, um, he, he gets this battle axe, and... <laughs> He's going to, like, chop Ernest's head off. I thought that was hilarious. Um, 
then that guy, and then Abner gets there, and he, like, knocks out that security guard and does that Elvis stance and pose and sound, and I thought that was hilarious. Um, he gets ready to chop Ernest in the head. Abner walks in there and uses this, uh, piece of, uh, the, uh, cannon that Ernest found at the beginning of the movie and uses it as a boomerang to knock out the bad guy. That was funny. That was hilarious. Um, then pretty much this, uh, the, uh, British Secret Service or whatever they are shows up in there. They're wanting the crown jewels too, and they're like, well, we can't get them off your head, so I guess that means you're going to be the king. And he's like, uh, <clears throat> Ernest is like, I can't be king. I can't, I'm not good with responsibility. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. And then uh, you get this really funny, charming ending where uh, Dr. Abner is like, hey, Ernest, what's that on your shirt? And it's like role reversal now. He does it to him because Ernest has been doing it to him the whole movie. He's like, Ernest, what's that on your shirt? And uh, Jim Varney looks down. He flicks him like that, and it causes the crown to come flying off. <laughs> then they start messing around with each other like Ernest gets him in the headlock, starts giving him noogies or whatever on the head. I thought that was really charming. This is a really charming movie, and I had fun with it because it's like a really fun, uh, goofy adventure movie with these two characters. And uh, Ernest is like obsessed with treasure hunting and all that shit. Oh, and you got like this funny scene. They're looking for more parts of the cannon. Dr. Abner is using the metal detector, I believe. And uh, Ernest uh, is talking about... Uh, I had this uh, finder thing once or whatever, uh, and but then he says I lost it. <laughs> that was hilarious that Jim Varney said that. He says he has some kind of I for, I can't believe I forgot the joke. I just watched the movie a while ago, but it was it was so I couldn't deliver it the way Jim Varney does. He says something like I had a a finder thing or a key finder, not a key finder, but some kind of finder thing. Jim Varney uh, Jim Varney says that, and then he says but I lost it. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. Like he has a finder thing, but he lost it. I thought that was hilarious. But yeah, I recommend go watch this movie. This is a really good, charming movie. If you just like buddy movies, I would say see this one, even if you're not an Ernest fan. This movie, along with Ernest Saves Christmas, is another one of those movies where I say watch even if you're not an Ernest fan. Um, I would say that Ernest Scared Stupid would also probably appeal to people who aren't just Ernest fans, but just like a good, goofy Halloween movie. But uh, this is another one of those films that does, I do think, straight up would appeal to uh, movie fans as well, not just Ernest fans. Even though I am an Ernest fan, and I do like these, film as, like these films as Ernest movies, and they are Ernest movies. But some of them just have plots, I think, that are more appealing uh, and uh, to other people besides just Ernest fans. And I would say this is one of them, in my opinion. Not saying that the other plots are bad. Because they're more, you know, earnestish and they're more, more earnest style and stuff like that. <clears throat> Sorry, once again. But um, I just, uh, I just think a movie about two buddies, you know, treasure hunting and stuff like that for a canon and all that would probably be more appealing to more different types of people, even people that don't like like Ernest's style of comedy is what I'm trying to say. Like the other films probably have more of Ernest's signature style of comedy in it, which is great. But films like this um, have Ernest's signature style of comedy, but it just meshes more with the plot to me because these films have more of an interesting story the, like the film like this and uh, Ernest Saves Christmas. So that's why I feel like this film would be more appealing to other people besides just Ernest fans. Like If you're going to watch any Ernest film, I would say watch out of the ones I've seen so far. Dr. Otto, I would say watch, but it's not really an Ernest movie. Uh, but I still say watch it. It is a good movie. Um, I would say if you, if you have to only watch like a certain Ernest film or if you only want to watch the best ones, I would say watch Ernest Saves Christmas and uh, and Ernest Rides Again, this one. But Ernest Scared Stupid is also re really enjoyable. Um, but I'd say if you're going to watch any of the two thus far that I've seen, if you had to just watch the best ones, I would say watch Ernest Saves Christmas and Ernest Rides Again. But yeah, I'd give this film a four, star, four stars out of a possible four stars. I'll see you guys again when I believe... Um, the next one is Ernest Goes to School. So I'll see you guys again with Ernest Goes to School.